Hi, and welcome to Omni Edition Garden City. I am Dan York, and with me now is Sergeant Bruce Shippey from the Garden City Police Department. Uh, I think most people know you best as Rudy's best friend, the yeah. canine officer here in Garden City. Welcome to our studio, and welcome to our program. Thanks for having us. We want to talk today about uh, some of the changes that happen in the winter. Finally, we've had a little bit of snow on the ground and how difficult it is to get around sometimes with uh, sidewalks covered with snow, with driveways that are blocked, that kind of stuff. That's what we want to talk about specifically, I guess being a good neighbor. Uh, so, so let's talk about the sidewalk thing, and, and this is something we talked about last summer a little bit, but about the problem created by people whose cars block the sidewalk. Now I know a lot of people have short driveways. This is Garden City. Not everybody can get their car far enough up in their driveway. But it's really important that people not block the sidewalk because it creates a whole myriad of problems. Yeah, that's probably one of our more prevalent complaints, especially come springtime when people start walking more, right? So uh, people are walking more, pushing strollers, you know, trying to get healthier and by doing different activities. You also have kids that are out just riding bikes. When those uh, bumpers protrude into the sidewalk or block them completely, a couple of things get present, whether they catch themselves on the back of a bumper or whether they try to go around it and they hit that grass, right? They go around the sidewalk and hit the grass. And we don't want to see anybody get hurt in the city. We'd rather see, be able to see people just go about the things they want to do and use the sidewalks without being impeded. Sure. And, it, and it's, a, it, it's a big problem at times, right? Yeah. At, at times, people don't think about it. I don't think anybody intentionally blocks the sidewalk. Um, it's just something that happens. Everybody's busy in their lives. And most people, when we talk to them, uh, they never really realize they did it. And we usually don't have to go back there again. So right. it's just about being a good neighbor and most of the time just reminding them that, hey, your car's blocking the sidewalk. And give them a couple of examples of it, and it usually gets fixed. And it's actually an ordinance, right? It's actually against the law to do it. It, it is. I, it is against the law to do it for those reasons. So I guess kind of... Uh, pigtailing into that, shoveling your sidewalk. And, and let me backtrack too, because in the winter time, it's probably even a bigger problem because if people have shoveled their sidewalks and they have shoveled their driveways, someone that may have been able to maneuver around this in the summertime can't do it in the winter because of the snow piles. Yeah, you're right, Dan. That's a good point is you've got them uh, piled on both sides of driveways now. So when people have got to walk, they can't step up over those mounds. And if they do, they're at even more of a risk of falling. Especially it, somebody in a wheelchair. Yeah, you're in a wheelchair, you're just out for a walk. There's a lot of people walk their dogs in the wintertime, but even more so, what about the kids? So you have a lot of um, transportation, the school buses, right? They, we move a lot of kids in our school district with the buses. Those kids usually walk to school. Parents are helping them. So there's a lot of activity on those sidewalks. So it's equally as important just because it's the winter to be a good neighbor and make sure you're not blocking that. And this does dovetail into what I started to talk about, making sure your sidewalks are shoveled. Again, it, sometimes it becomes a real chore because it snowed, snowed two inches today, it snowed three inches the day after, snows five more inches, and then you, you have to A, decide, okay, how much do I wait for? and you don't necessarily, you know, it's different with your grass because you can say, I'm going to cut it on Thursday. Right. But if you don't know when it's going to snow and maybe you had plans that night and maybe you're working that night. So it really becomes kind of a shell game as to how you get that snow off your sidewalk. But regardless, it has to happen. It, you're right. And, and we try to um, we try to take into account a lot of those things when we have to go out and talk to people that haven't uh, moved the snow off their sidewalk. And a lot comes into play, right? So people are busy in their lives. If it's a snow event, they're difficult driving to work. Sometimes they're getting up earlier to get to work on time. And hardly anybody is able to get out of work early so they can get mm -hmm. home on time, right? So now they're home late, and now they've got to shovel walks. And like you said, you get two, three inches. Then do you do it again before you go to bed? We all do that, right? Gosh, it's 11 o'clock. Should I do them one more time right. or and wait till the morning? do I go out morning? with my snowblower at 11 o'clock and wake up my neighbors? Right. Or do I start it at 5 in the morning and sure. wake them up? So it's all about a bit just being a good neighbor. And take a, take a, a look at your sidewalk and think, would I want to walk to it? What happens if I can't get it in the morning? What about if there are people walking in the evening? You know, just look at it that most of the time you're going to find the answers and do the right thing. 
and in my neighborhood, because we all have snow blowers, it's usually the first guy out. It's his responsibility to do more than one house. Yes. You know, if you're the first one out, then you better do at least the two houses on either side of you, and and, and hopefully they'll return the favor. That's uh, that's important because that helps on. everybody. Then, right? If so, if you're all extending it a little bit more each, you know, with each event, and everybody's looking out for each other, miraculously, so you go out there and all you got to do is your driveway now. And, and especially if you have elderly or those who are in need mm -hmm. that, that live in your neighborhood, it's really important to help them out. Yes, yes, I agree. I think it's really important to just be a good neighbor and take care of it as soon as you can take care of it. And unfortunately, you might have to take care of it often. <laughs> but um, Not so much this winter yet. We, we live in Michigan, yeah. so we're all, we're all aware of it, yeah. right? And, and, and as we said with the blocking the sidewalk uh, issue, this is an ordinance. It is technically against the law to not shovel your snow. Correct. It is against the law to not shovel your snow for all of the reasons that we talked about. Um, we would like to, and we usually do get compliance, usually just a knock and talking to people. You hear about you know, their busy life they've had or why they haven't done it. Um, most people aren't intentionally doing it because they want to impede people's ability to walk. So usually we can resolve it that way. Okay, very good. Um, and again, in the same vein, snow emergencies. Uh, the term may be a little misleading because the object is to get people's cars off the street so that the DPS can do a better job plowing so that the DPS guys and the cars aren't at risk because if there's cars on both sides of the street and the plow is going down the middle, well, there's a risk he's maybe going to sideswipe one of those cars. And, and obviously, if they can do a better job of plowing the street, then it's a better job of plowing the street. But again, it's an ordinance and it's required and it's automatic when there's three inches of snow on the ground, but normally we will declare it. Correct. So once uh, you've put a snow emergency in effect, you do have to move your vehicles off of the roadway. That's all vehicles. I think something some people don't realize is when it's in effect, you can't return them onto the roadway either just because they plowed it. Like we said, it's Michigan. Is it going to continue snowing? Is it going to stop? Are they going to, so that, they might make multiple passes through there. And sometimes you'll even get where somebody left a car, they plow around it, and our crew is great about trying to come back if that car's moved and now clean it again. So please don't put them back on the street until the snow emergency is lifted. Sure. And there's lots of ways to be notified about a snow emergency. It will always be on the city's website, gardencitymi.org. Uh, you can be notified through Nixle, and the link to Nixle is on the city's website also. It's normally on our social media, Facebook for sure, and it normally appears on GCTV, which is 12 on Comcast, 18 on WOW, and 99 on UVerse. So there's no legitimate reason for someone not to know. There may not be a newspaper in town anymore, but that wouldn't really apply here. But really, there's no reason not to know, either through notification or just the simple fact of three inches of snow on the ground, it's automatically in effect. Yeah, and, and the theme today has kind of been, you've heard both of us talk about it just being a good neighbor. So if yep. you look out there and you know it's going to snow and you're seeing uh, some of these cars being moved and you're going to bed, why not be a good neighbor and just move it in the driveway if that's, you know. And we do go possible. to great lengths to not call a snow emergency at midnight or 2 in the morning or 3 in the morning or 4 in the morning. Normally, if, there's going, if it's going to go into effect at that point, we try to declare it at 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock at night so people know before they go to bed. Correct. That's why sometimes you'll see uh, you guys do a great job of kind of like trying to get a hold of them ahead of time and mm -hmm. saying, in the event, or this is right. forecasted. Right. You know, one of the other things that just kind of came to mind when we talked about moving them is with the city, um, we've got some of these older homes where we've got lack of driveway space. And people now, it's not uncommon to, you know, for one person to own two cars. So if you have two or three people in a household, you could have four or five. And we'll get calls you know, saying, I have no room to park this. I suggest to the people, talk to your neighbors. Do you have an elderly person in the neighborhood where you might be able to use their driveway? In turn, shovel their walk for them. Okay. Um, can I use your driveway during a snow event? We'll put them there. I'll shovel your walk. It'll be gone by you know, when sure. you go to work or whatever. But we can't. Uh, we we don't have the ability to give people a pass and say you can park on the street because you own so many vehicles, regardless of whether you're able to move them or not. They have to be moved off the road. Okay. 
Well, Sergeant Bruce Shippey, I want to thank you for uh, spending time with us just to clarify some of these things and, and get the information out there. And uh, our, our best to you and to Rudy, who's, uh, who's back at PD today. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. All right. Thanks very much. Thanks for watching Omni Edition Garden City. I'm Dan York. Good night, everybody.